Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about unofficial memory upgrades for QNAP NAS. We're continuing looking at the 53D series from QNAP and we're going to be installing today Kingston memory. We're going to be utilizing the 16 gig stick of Kingston memory. Now in my previous videos I have looked at different capacities for 8 and indeed 16 maybe even 32 but the reason i'm focusing squarely on the 16 gig to go today even though i've got an 8 and a 16 gig module is let's face it with this device having two memory slots and the fact that we've had success with crucial memory and time tech memory as well as official memory from qnap and the a data memory we're pretty confident that this memory is going to work. So to make this video a lot shorter, we're gonna go straight into the 16 gig memory module one, 16 gig memory module from, Q, um, from Kingston inside a 453D. Now, first and foremost, I am well aware of the fact that this is a 653D, I'm not blind, but over there we have got the 453D currently booting up with a 16 gig module inside. What I was gonna show you now while that does the booting, and you'll probably hear it eventually beeping in the background if it works, is the installation of one of these um, 16 gig modules inside a 53D series NAS, because it's the same whether it's the two, the four, or the six bay model, they've all got the same CPU, the J4125, and they all support DDR4 memory. Now, by default, the QNAP 53D arrives with a um, 2400 MHz memory, uh, 4 gig by default across one um, module, but there are two available slots, and it officially supports a maximum of 8 gig, so that's 4 gig in each slot. So technically what we're doing is an unsupported setup. QNAP aren't quite as strict as Synology when it comes to memory upgrades. They do have their own official memory upgrades, but they do recommend um, several other brands from Samsung. I think Crucial and Kingston are on there as well um, of their own memory modules. But they still only say that you can only go up to a maximum 8 gig officially on the 53D. Indeed, the Intel CPU inside has an officially supported maximum of 8 gig. So what we're doing today is moving outside of the officially supported maximum on this device. So... Do bear that in mind, and of course, take heed to this disclaimer, because I know it sounds like I'm trying to say, oh, legal, I don't want to get involved, but we are talking about your data. We are talking about introducing an unsupported setup on your NAS. So if you are going to do this, you have to know the fact. First and foremost, if you're going to do this, have a multi-tiered backup and redundant strategy in place. Have a USB backup in place, have a NAS to NAS backup via the network or the internet, have a redundant um, and returnable fail safes in place, such as a RAID configuration, have um, snapshots running in the background, have a cloud managed backup of your NAS. Make sure that your data is not all inside this one device and you're gonna start fiddling with the memory because you might do something that could potentially brick your system or worse still, be working today and then tomorrow, it fails. So make sure if you're going to go outside the official remit of eight gig of supported memory, that you ensure that you have you know, contingencies in place in the event that it can corrupt your data and you have to do a recovery, okay? So let's install the memory inside this. It is worth highlighting that we are using a 16 gig module that actually costs a lot less than a lot of other or ones out there. Probably the most expensive modules out there are Samsung and Crucial. The Kingston one's pretty affordable with the added benefit that the memory that arrives inside your QNAP is 2400 and the memory modules we're looking at today are 2666 and that is a speed and frequency in megahertz. So we are using faster memory than that inside the system. But do remember to, if you do have mixed memory inside, keep it at the same frequency. Even if you have a four gig and an eight gig or an eight gig and a 16 gig, to make sure they're the same frequency because that's way worse than different capacities overall. Also, for this test, I have already pre-installed QTS inside this device. So I've already installed QTS and a bunch of apps. I've already set up the RAID across all of these individual hard drives. And after that, I'm gonna go ahead 
and install this memory. I've powered it down, but just make sure you've got your software already pre-installed. So again, I'm showing you how to install this, but we're not utilizing this six bay, the four bay over there. That I've just heard beep. So I think that's a good sign that it works at least. Um, and we're going to install our 16 gig module now. So again, if we have a look inside, we can see that L-shaped configuration there at the back. And that L-shape is where we install our memory. If we go there, we can then take our memory module like so, pop it out of there, grab our Kingston uh, 16 gig that we're utilizing here. And this is a dual rank memory module. Now do bear that in mind. It's very, very important that you know the difference between single rank and dual rank. It's less important, really, on the 8 gig model, but once you go higher than that, it's very important that you go for dual rank memory. The reason being that single rank means that all the memory chips on this memory module are on one side with the other one blank. Now, on the face of it, who cares? It's still the same sodium, but it's way more than that. The CPU inside this device definitely works better when each one of those chips only has one gig of memory. So having a single rack of memory on an 8 gig still means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 individual cells, each of 1 gig. But once you reach 16 gig, if you get a single rank or SR memory module, that means each of these memory modules will be 2 gig in size. And the CPU is not a fan of that. So just make sure you're using a dual rank when it comes to 16 gig, because it means that 8 on the one side, 8 on the other, and therefore you are seeing 16 gig or 16 times 1 gig. So bear that in mind. Also, make sure it's DDR4, non-ECC, 2,666 megahertz, although you can get away with 2,400. You might as well go big or go home. And make sure that it is so dim. So inside, they're quite easy to spot where it goes inside because the alignment of these um, cells, if you look at the base of it, one side is longer, so it's quite clear which side it has to go in. Once you start it inside, it will be a levered mechanism. So you pop it inside, and if you can see that, it's raised up. Now, just put your finger along the edge of the memory module, push it down, and you'll hear that double click, and that's both arms on either side of the memory holding the memory module in place. Then reintroduce your memory, in uh, your hard drives, I should say, inside. And then from there, once it's done and all done together, you can boot up the device. So what I'm going to do while I'm installing these drives back in here, I will be testing this, but that will be off camera. The 4-bay over there, the TS453D, uh, d is now built by the look of it. All the LEDs are flashing, which is a good sign. So I'm going to log into QTS and double check that it is indeed seeing all 16 gig of memory inside that NAS. So let's go ahead and move over to the screen. Okay, so we've logged into our QNAP NAS here to see if our Kingston memory has been found. As you can see, QTS has loaded, which is a very, very good sign. And just before I go into that, I just wanted to highlight the memory that I am utilizing. Because once again, if you do run this test, do know that you are doing something that's slightly against both the hardware manufacturer and the CPU manufacturer's guidelines of recommended memory, for stability at least anyway. But this is the memory module that we are looking at. This is the 16 gig memory module. There you go, it's that Kingston one right there. Do double check once again that it is double, um, a dual rank or DR. Now, if we go into the QNAP system, let's make our way into the control panel. We're gonna do a few little tests there. I mean, first and foremost, I've noticed that we're not actually seeing the CP, the, the memory listed here at the top of the control panel, which is something, I, I'll be honest, that's not great that I can't see that there at the top, but let's go into the hardware and have a look at the info center and get some idea about the system. Loading it there, and it does state that it has got two memory slots and 16 gig. If we go a little bit more in detail, we can see that it has recognized that 16 gig Kingston memory module. It's also stating there's 14 gig, currently available to use and that's because the system almost certainly is using around two gig anyway to run the background applications we've already got pre-installed on this system and of course because we have built a raid on this device when i wanted to make sure that we had the whole system set up uh, before testing this memory so we had it with the pre-installed four gig by default and we've removed that four gig and installed that 16 gig kingston 
So it has been recognized there. Let's get the alternative resource monitor open as well and just check all the key areas that it has been logged. As you can see, it's registered it there. There's 1.38 being utilized with 15.54 gigabytes um, still available. All right, that's out of 15, I should say. Sorry, my, uh, my mistake. And again, if we make our way into some of the services here, we can have a look at if there's anything we can do. But for the most part, it looks like it has seen this memory. We will, of course, be running a lot more extensive tests on this. We will be running uh, and installing the VM management tool as well uh, for virtualization, just to see how that goes. If we make our way uh, in, we can have a look at installing the uh, virtual machine tool from QNAP. We can have a little look there. Let's go down to virtualization station and let's install virtualization station and just double check that we are able to pre-allocate that amount of memory to a VM. Right, so we've installed QNAP's Virtualization Station 3 software. I'm going to skip ahead. We're not going to worry too much about going to the marketplace. Let's full screen this and make our way in. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a VM. We're just going to call it Test. Uh, we're going to make it a Windows-based VM. We're going to use two of the cores, but let's face it, the thing that we're interested in is here the memory slider. So you see, so let's give this a decent amount of memory. Let's go for eight gig and we'll go down. We'll have to select where we're going to say this data is going to live. Let's pop it in that folder for now. And we're going to go down and create this virtual machine. Now, bear in mind, this virtual machine is not going to be utilizing Windows because uh, we'd have to put in a Windows OS disk or an image, an ISO, and we're not utilizing that for this test. We can see the percentages there on screen and if we make our way into the VM itself and its individual settings. We can have a look and see, as far as the memory is concerned, it's utilizing eight gig of memory there. If we open it up, we're obviously not gonna see anything there because we're not putting a bootable disk for this VM. But if we make our way into the performance monitors here, we can see that everything's kind of ticking along, although I would have hoped to have seen a spike there with regards to memory being utilized. But I do know that that memory spike is relative to what we see on screen. Because even though we've pre-allocated, because we've left memory sharing activated, the result has been that we're not seeing the full utilization of that 8 gig. And indeed, that's quite a nifty little feature of Virtualization Station, that you can share a lot of those assets across the system, even when they're semi-pre-allocated. But this has been my test of the Kingston 16 gig DDR4 memory module in Sodium. Once again... This test was done, so you don't have to. But if you do want to do this, I do recommend checking out that SSD. There'll be links in the description to take you straight to it. Or if you're slightly of the faint of heart, you can always visit the guys at span.com, whereupon at span, they will do the complete build for you of your NAS, including the memory, and run a series of memory tests before you receive your item. Worldwide shipping, 25 years in the business of data storage. What have you got to not like about that? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.